Cicely, in 2009, um, established firms have really cut their intellectual property budget. What effect has that had on companies that wanted to shape or reshape their intellectual property protection strategies? Well, I think budget concerns are always important, um, particularly with respect to intellectual property, because IP costs can, can be very high and you really need to, to have a much more active management role when you're thinking about your costs. Um, I think the economy has forced people to really think more carefully about, rather than just setting aside money for IP, think about what is it exactly that we're getting and then putting the money into the types of IP coverage that make the most sense for the enterprise. Um, one of the things I'm seeing is that people are increasingly looking at the different types of intellectual property that's available beyond just utility patents, which includes design patents, um, sui, uh, sui generis rights, things like that. Um, and the other thing that people are doing more is um, they're actively categorizing their own intellectual property into IP that uh, could be licensed versus IP that's in a commercial um, product they have now or a future product and then IP that really now is no longer relevant to them and they're sort of performing a triage and, and that can be a little hard because sometimes people feel like wow I've already paid all this money into this piece of IP and now I'm going to kill it but the reality is from a business perspective if you're not using it and you can't license it or use it to somehow benefit the business it, it doesn't really make sense to continue to pay for it and I think people are having those more difficult conversations more frequently these days. And Cicely, what were the most important case laws um, in intellectual property litigation in 2009? Well, I think that uh, 2009 was a big year for us in intellectual property cases. Um, certainly a lot of them impacted uh, how practitioners like me will approach going forward with representing our clients in the patent office. But the ones I think that really resonated the most with um, the actual um, companies is the Bilski case, which is a case that's currently in front of the Supreme Court now. Um, the, it's a and the original claims of the case were directed to an algorithm um, for determining commodities and um, the, the Federal Circuit said that the claims weren't patentable subject matter and they put in a, a new test for essentially for software saying that they had to have machine or transformation. Um, and this caused a big scramble in the IP community while we tried to figure out do we need machine and transformation or um, you know can we get by with something different. Um, and right now it's on um, on appeal to the Supreme Court and we're all waiting to see what happens. As a practical matter, the machine transformation test is really similar to what's required in Europe, so most cases are probably going to include that language anyway, it's just a matter of how we strategize the claims in the U.S. Um, but there are some concerns that the ramifications for areas like medical diagnostics would be quite burdensome and so we we definitely don't want to lose our edge in some of these emerging technologies and healthcare and things like that um, with a change in the law so um, it's going to be that's the one to watch for this year um, the other thing that has been of increased concern for companies from the cases that were coming out last year is we've got a new version of a patent troll. It was, it was always the non-practicing entity who would go out and sue somebody for practicing a patent when they didn't actually um, practice it and it was sort of considered hijacking um, legitimate companies who are creating products and doing good things for society using patents in a way that um, some people would say they weren't intended to be using. Um, but now they've got this, this new version of the troll, which, is, uh, which are these people that go after um, companies that are marking their products with their patent number and the patent's expired or um, maybe the patent shouldn't have been on there. The big one really seems to be the expired patents because it's easy to pick up a product, look at it, see a patent number, figure out the expiration date, and then sue the person. And there's a statutory damage of up to $500 per um, per item and so it's potentially huge. Right now it looks like the courts are are not amused with the um, litigation strategy so so far the, the judgments we're seeing are actually pretty low but we've had a, a huge uptick in the number of cases even in the first quarter of this year I think uh, we exceeded first quarter 2010 probably by double the number of cases that were on file last year. So that's going to be something that people are going to be watching. However, we don't recommend people get rid of their, their marking um, programs with their products. We just recommend that they come up with a strategy to make sure that they can make a reasonable case that they aren't 
marking inappropriately. So, Great. Thank you, Cicely. You're welcome.